Hey folks, it's John with KTTropicals.com bringing you another episode of Tank Talk Q&A where I'm answering your questions sent into that email address right there. If you'd like to see your question get answered, send it in today because I got a long list and I don't do these videos all that much. So it might take a while to get an answer. So you might want to get it in right now. You haven't seen any videos come out from me lately because we've been so completely overwhelmed with our move. If you're not aware, if you didn't catch the update video I did a while back, I had explained that we've shut the shop down and we're moving our operation from that building back to the house. This has not been an easy thing. It's just Lisa and I. It's been completely overwhelming. It's in the middle of winter. We had the holidays, everything else. It's been crazy, but we're almost done with it completely. You can expect a video to come out in the next couple of days showing the new setup that we have here. It's not 100% done. It's still a work in progress, but you'll get to see what we have going on and get a good idea of what this place is going to look like. So I got some really good questions lined up here for you today. I want to mention real quick that I hope you've been enjoying the pod vids is what I like to call them. The video version of our podcast that I've been uploading once a week to YouTube. It's something that's gotten a lot of views. And so I think it's done really well. It's just another way of sharing my podcast. If you haven't listened to the podcast yet, or if you've only seen those videos, podcast goes up every single Tuesday. It's available on iTunes or any other podcast directory out there. You can even get it on our website, but right now that's not very reliable because we had to switch systems and I haven't figured out how to do it yet. But you can definitely get it on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Republic, any of those other uh, podcast directories out there and have a listen to it every Tuesday when it goes up. And tomorrow is a huge episode. You're definitely going to want to check that out because I've got Jenny from Solid Gold on the episode. We had a blast talking A to Z goldfish. It was a really good time. And we got to learn some things about her too, which was a lot of fun. She was a good sport and she's probably going to want to come on again because we had a really good time. So you're going to want to check that out. Again, iTunes, Stitcher, any other podcast directory, you'll find it. Just search for Tank Talk and there it will be. So Let's move on. Let's get into these questions. First question comes in from Ty Crosby. He says, hey, John, I live in Oregon, and the only access to African cichlids where I live is from Petco or PetSmart. Should I buy their fish? Thanks. Love the videos. You got to understand something here. Those stores are no different than any other big box stores. They buy their fish. They buy their equipment in mass quantities for the cheapest price. And so they buy them from farms that sell for the cheapest. So you have to understand the quality that you're going to get from a place like that. It's not the greatest quality. Those stores really cater to young people and beginners. So that's the kind of quality that comes along with it. If you want to get the more high-end quality stuff, you are going to need to go to a local fish store, which you don't have. So what's your next option? Order them online. Please order them from me. But if you don't want to order them from me, there are tons of places out there where you can order your fish and have them shipped direct to you. If you're absolutely against that or you think shipping costs too much or whatever it is and you have no other choice but to buy there, what else are you going to do? It's either buy them there or not have them at all. So should you buy there? No. But if it's your only option, what else are you going to do? I mean, you might as well. Just understand that those big box stores are really no different than any other big box store out there. When you buy from a discount place like that, that buys their stuff in mass quantities, you save money, but you sacrifice in quality. The quality is going to come from a more specialized place like my shop or any of the others out there or a local fish store. And hey, you can't tell me even in Oregon that there isn't a local fish store within a couple hours from you. I just had a guy email me yesterday that wants to drive down to me from Delaware. Look at a map. It's a long way. People will drive a good distance to get a good quality fish. You might have to do the same. Or go to KGTropicals.com. Just order them. I'll ship them right out to you. Next question comes in from Fahim. I'm not even going to try your last name. No disrespect. I just I don't want to botch your last name. Little broken English, but I'm going to do my best here. I have a three feet salt water tank with a power filter. I keep five koi fishes, which are two inches long. I got fast moving water as it's koi. Koi ate my two little guppy fishes. 
and I'm really worried about it. So please suggest to me some names of fishes that I can keep with my koi. Okay, this is a tough one because the first thing that has to be said is koi don't really belong in that size tank. You really do need to have a bigger tank if you're going to keep koi. Koi get massive, and to have them in a three-foot tank is is kind of mean. But to what are you going to keep with koi? Well, you're going to keep other koi, or you're going to keep goldfish. Now, you're going to need to buy your goldfish a little larger, and I don't mean fancy goldfish like I talked with Jenny about. I'm talking about things like comet goldfish. I see people put them in ponds with koi all the time. They get really big. I've had them up to a foot in my shop. They get really big, and they go well with koi because they're related, so they work well together. I wouldn't start mixing other tropical fish in or cichlids. For God's sakes, don't put cichlids in there with them. You're kind of limited as to what you can put in the tank with your koi. I would keep it to other koi or goldfish. You should be okay, but start thinking about getting a bigger tank. Next one comes from Patty Boom Boom Patty. I'm not making this stuff up. Hey, I just wanted to ask, do I need to have a pump pumping air into my tank? Air pumps are something that are very good to have in an aquarium. It helps with the oxygenation of the water. It helps your fish, absolutely. Are air pumps oxygen pumps? No. Jenny and I talked about that in the podcast a little bit. They're not going to pump oxygen into your tank. So, you know, anybody who's out there that says, they're like oxygen tanks. No, they're not. They help to oxygenate the water. It's a different thing. The water is moving because of the bubbles, which allows oxygen into the water for your fish to absorb and be able to survive. So is it absolutely critical you have to have it or all your fish are going to die? No, because I'm guessing that in your tank you have a filter, which is filtering the water and also moving the water, causing a ripple on the top of the water. That should be enough. But if your filter doesn't move the water all that much, or maybe you don't have a filter, then you're definitely going to want an air pump. You need to help the water move. There needs to be a current in there. Stagnant water gets depleted of oxygen, and fish have a very difficult time surviving in it. Some of your air breathers do a little bit better, but for the most part, the fish that we're keeping in tanks need to have the water moving. So if all else fails, you don't have the water moving at all, put an air pump in there and it'll start moving. But if you have a filter and it's filtering really good and moving the water, you should be fine. You don't absolutely need one unless you want to add some bubbles for decoration. Next one is kind of a long one. It comes from Pat F. Hi there. I guess I have a couple questions for you. The first, in one of your YouTube videos, you had mentioned that having a jewel in a typical African cichlid tank just wouldn't work and that you would get back to that in a bit, but you never did in your video. Sorry about that. So I would appreciate knowing more details about why that is, and if you could also suggest better tank mates for the jewel cichlid and whatever else I might need to know. Now, I can't tell you everything you might ever need to know about jewels, but I can tell you this. Are they from the continent of Africa? Yes, but they're from the rivers and streams. They're not from the three rift lakes that we know most African cichlids come from. So they have a completely different water parameter. They like a lower pH, more of a neutral hardness where... African cichlids from the three lakes like it to be a high pH and very hard. So different water parameters. Their water parameters are a little bit more closely related to your South and Central American cichlids. That's what I've kept them with in the past, and they've done fine. Jewels don't get huge, though, so you got to be careful of who you put them with. But they do much better with your South and Central American cichlids than they do African cichlids. Do some people keep jewels with Africans? Malawi, Tanganyika, Victoria? Yeah, they do. They're very hardy, so they can tolerate different water parameters. But is it a good idea? It's about as good an idea as putting angelfish with Africans. Can it work? Sure. But most likely, it won't. So, I don't know what more you want me to tell you about those fish. They're beautiful little fish. I get a lot of questions about them. They're gorgeous with the bright red. One of the only true red fish out there when it comes to fish from Africa anyway. Beautiful fish. I wouldn't mix them with your Malawans or your Tanganyikans or your Victorians though. So your next question is, I have a 125 gallon tank and I'm wanting to develop an amazing cichlid tank with it. I've watched your videos suggesting how to add them and what to add and such. 
but I'm curious how many I can really add considering how big they will eventually grow. I don't want to stock too heavy only to find out that after they grow that it's just too congested. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it just for you, Pat. I'm going to put a video right here. You can click on that right there and watch my video where I talk about how many African cichlids you can put in your tank. Understand, and I very clear in the video, I very clearly say that the numbers that I give you are maximum stocking numbers. So understand that. You don't have to go to those numbers, but that will definitely help you out a lot when coming up with how many you can put in the tank. It's just a formula that I use. It's not overly complicated. Watch that video and you'll see. Um, last one he puts on here. Do you know how and where I can locate compressiceps? I live in Canada and finding it difficult to procure one. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm from the U.S. and I have no idea who even sells fish in Canada. Go online and, and look it up. Some places in the States are able to ship over the border. I'm not one of them. So unfortunately, I can't help you out there. But just look online and it's not a really difficult fish to find. If you're just looking for the regular Dimitochromus compressiceps, you shouldn't have a hard time. But, uh, you know, go online and find them up there. I don't, I don't know. If you lived in the States, I could help you. But let's move on to the next one. Next question comes from Matt Miles. And I have to do a little bit of explaining on this question here. This question came in to me on the 6th of January, 2014. Folks, I have 400 and something. I'll put it right here. I'll put a little screenshot of my computer screen where my email. I've got almost 500 questions that have been sent to KGQ&A. Of course, I wasn't able to answer all of them. There's a lot of duplicates in there and everything else. But I figured today would be a lot of fun to go all the way back. And Matt Miles was one of the oldest questions that was in there. So I figured I would do him a favor and answer his question. I don't remember the question. I'm going to read it right now. Hopefully, it wasn't a pressing issue that he really needed an answer quickly. But I saw on a recent Q&A video, one recent, <laughs> The question someone asked about fish not growing. You had answered that you think it might have just been a runt. My question is, I have seven fish that I got all at once, supposed to be red shoulders, that were three quarters of an inch to an inch and a quarter, that have never grown, and obviously not colored at all. In the five to six months that I've had them, what could cause this? They are never picked on that I've seen. They swim like normal, and they eat several pellets each feeding. Almost all of my other fish are growing at an expected rate. Now, this this is tricky because it's a group of fish. It's not just one. But you you have to... I'm no scientist, okay? But this is the way I look at this stuff. I look at, I compare it to human beings. You have some families that have people... The whole family is five foot three. And then you look at the family next door and they got all power forwards and centers. They're all six, seven and six, eight in that house. I mean, it's got to be the same kind of thing. I've got a good friend who's like five, one, if he's even that, he might even be shorter than that. He comes by the shop all the time. Now he'll be coming to the house, but he's, he's a small guy. They call him little Chuck. He's probably watching right now. There's nothing wrong with him. There, he, he has no health problems. He's just a shorter guy. And, you know, it is what it is. So I look at it when I've run across that. And I've had that happen, too, where you just got a batch of fish that, for whatever reason, they don't want to grow. I look at it the same as I would with people. There's just some people don't get as big as others. I mean, little Chuck is like five foot. Shaquille O'Neal's seven two. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I know that we're not talking about people here, but I like to use the human analogy because it just makes sense. And it, it makes things to me a little bit more clear. It has to be that if your other fish are growing and everything's normal with them, which this was over a year ago that you sent this to me, but your other fish are growing. These ones aren't. It's just a, a batch of fish that for whatever reason isn't growing because they're just runts. I, I'm sorry to tell you that. I would love an update, though. I'd love for you to send another email, if you watch this, hopefully you do, to kgqna at gmail.com, or just email me directly at kgtropicals at gmail.com. I'd like to know what happened with those, if they've started growing for you or not. I mean, I know you were hoping 
that I would give you a little bit better advice than that, but unfortunately, I don't have any. Last question comes from someone that I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name. I'm sorry. I like your videos. You are doing great work. And the question is, when do I have to feed fry? How old or what size do they need to be? And what do I feed them? That's not exactly what the email says, but I, that's what I said. I'm sorry for the bad token is what he said, but I think he meant talking. I hope you're not token. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Fry, it's, it's pretty common with all fry. It doesn't matter what kind of fish you're breeding. Most fish are not going to hatch from an egg and swim out of the egg and be free swimming fry. Uh, to my knowledge, all fish, I just said most, but to my knowledge, all fish develop the same way. There could be others if there is. Okay. But they develop on the outside of the egg and the egg is consumed by that fry and actually ends up developing into their digestive system. Now, there could be fish that hatch. I don't know. But that while they have that egg sac attached to them, they don't need to be fed because they're getting everything that they need from that yolk sac or egg sac. Once that egg sac is gone, that's when they need to be fed because everything that they were getting from that is now gone. So I don't know what kind of fish you're breeding, but it should pretty much apply to any of them. It doesn't really matter. They're going to start moving around and swimming around if they're substrate layers or vertical layers or whatever. They're going to separate from whatever they're mounted on. If they're Africans, they're going to be in a tumbler or in the female's mouth. They're going to come out if they still have that big orange or yellow sack hanging from them. They don't need to be fed because, like I said, they're getting everything from there. Once that's gone, that's when you need to start feeding them. I know I just said the same thing twice, but I wanted to be very clear. Uh, what size should they be? It varies between different fish. Some of them are itty bitty. Some of them are a half of an inch. It just depends on the fish. And what does the food have to be? One of the best foods you could ever feed to any fry is live baby brine shrimp. Look it up online on how to do it. I've never done a video on how to hatch brine shrimp. It's not exactly an easy thing, but it's kind of fun. It's like a little extension of the hobby. Live baby brine shrimp or sea monkeys are one of the best things that you can feed to any type of fry. If you don't want to do that or you just don't feel like dealing with it, there are brine shrimp that can come frozen, little cube, drop that in there, the fry will peck at it. Or if all else fails and you don't have anything else to give them, you can just crumble up some flakes in your hand and put it in there. They will slowly sink and the fry will get them. Now, some people will say that you should crush up food, put it in a syringe, take it down to the group of fry and squirt it right on them. Nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine. But I have found, and, and I've had it where I've got 30 fry tanks in a line that are all eating teeny, teeny, tiny food. If you go through and you crumble up flakes and you throw them on the top of the tank, they will sink down and your fish will eat them. A good quality flake, not the cheap stuff. Your fish will grow and they'll thrive. And that's really all you got to do. But look into the brine shrimp. It's fun and it's probably the best food out there for fry. So that is it for today. This episode was a lot of fun. I haven't done one of these in a while. I really like doing these videos, though. They're a lot of fun. I'm going to try to do them a little bit more regularly. I don't know. We'll just see how things go. But if you want to get your question answered, don't forget, send in your question now to the email address right there, and we'll see if we can get it in there. If it's a duplicate, I'm probably not going to get to it, but you never know. And you might hear your question answered on the podcast, too, so don't forget to check that out. Head over to iTunes, whatever podcast directory you're using. Most people use iTunes. Go on there, search Tank Talk. You'll find it. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to support the sponsors. They've been popping up over here or over here. Don't forget to do that. Check out the new products that are offered from New Algae. There's a special on those. I put it up there before. I'm going to be doing a video on that today or tomorrow showing the results that I had with New Algae. Great product. And then, of course, there's Universal Rocks and me. KG Tropicals. So don't forget to check out those sponsors. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.